The egg wasn't normal. Not really. There was a yolk surrounded by a white. They didn't look like any yolk or white Simon had ever seen. I've never seen an egg like that, his sister Rook said, flicking back her long dark hair. It's all glowy, wondered Simon, reaching in a finger to touch. Don't, said Rook, pushing away his hand. We don't know what it is. Welcome to Stories from Under the Piano. I'm Craig Addy, your host. I'm the musician who listens to the listener. This podcast offers a glimpse into the world of Under the Piano, an immersive musical experience I've been providing for 15 years. Over a thousand people have discovered comfort, connection, and healing through these sessions lying under my grand piano. In each podcast episode, a guest shares a personal story and I respond with a spontaneous piano piece that evokes the emotions and mood of their story. My mission is to connect, comfort, and inspire through the universal language of music. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Let's dive in. Today, my guest is N.L. Ayer, who I've known a long time. How long have we known each other? Oh, over 10. Oh, no. More than 10 years, because it's been 10 years since I've been here. So probably 18 years? No, 16 years. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long time. Yes. So I am so delighted that you agreed to be on my podcast. Now, where do you live? I live not too far away from Craig, who's in Vancouver, uh, in BC. I am in C uh, just south of Seattle. So it's about two hours drive away and uh that that's where i'm living and uh, i work from home so you know it's i'm here all the time and you're a writer yes and i'm a writer and currently one of the things that i've been writing books i've been telling stories since i was four and i have been writing books probably a little a little later than that once i started writing and i was because i used to tell sister stories to my younger sister and uh, and the dog and various other people around me um and then i started writing and my mother was doing picture books at the same time and she had a publisher in the u.s who she would go and get books from and bring them back to us in bangkok so it was always it was always interesting to get these new fantastic books that came by you had you shared a little story with me about what inspired you to to write it. Yes, yes, I will. Uh, one of the things that that um, when I was when I was about four, I had a dream. I was sitting on the window seat and looking out of the window. It was on Halloween, and I saw a witch fly by over the backyard, and she had a, a she had candies wrapped candies, American candies that were shooting out of the the bristles of the broom behind her and the candies fell all over the garden all over on all over the grass on the garden on top of the we had a playhouse it was on top of the playhouse roof and it was all sparkling in the moonlight and i wanted to go down and get the candies but the house was locked. So I thought, well, I'll wait till the morning and I'll go back down in the morning. And when I went down in the morning, all of the candies were gone. And I thought they must have melted in the sun. But I came back up and I started telling stories to my sister about the candies and repeating all of the, the visions that I saw when I was asleep. So it's still, you know, in all of that time, that dream is very vivid to me and so are you saying it was that 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 process of heeding the story that got you interested in writing and telling to my sister because it was just something that the magic of this vision was so real to me that it always felt like a, it felt like an actual memory of me of mine and i was repeating i repeated this story all the time to my sister and to other people. And it's, it's been there. I can still, you know, it's still right now. I can picture the witch in Technicolor flying over the backyard, just scattering the candies. It was just, just so clear to me. We're going to do something a little different with your 
podcast, you're going to share an excerpt or two from something that you've written. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going, to, I'm going to pick one and create music to that. So which one are you going to read to us first? I think I'm going to read the one about the egg. This is the one of this. It, this the book is about Simon Spring, who's a who's a nine year old boy, and he's staying in his house in the country. And among the things that he finds down there is he finds he finds an egg on the first day because this is Easter. This is the opening of the book. The egg wasn't normal, not really. There was a yolk surrounded by a white. They didn't look like any yolk or white Simon had ever seen. I've never seen an egg like that, his sister Rook said, flicking back her long dark hair. It's all glowy, wondered Simon, reaching in a finger to touch. Don't, said Rook, pushing away his hand. We don't know what it is. The yolk was a bright, shining gold. Gold like a wedding ring, not like the colour people think of when they say dandelions and buttercups are gold. He pushed his glasses up to see more clearly. It looks like there are tiny flecks of real metal in that. The white shifted and undulated when he moved the bowl. Not clear like a normal raw egg white. It looked instead like liquid silver. Rook put her head to one side and considered the contents of the bowl. Did Livia really lay that? What on earth has she been eating? Simon shifted guiltily. Where had his hen Levia been yesterday, and what had she found to eat when she was there? And that's the question of the whole story. What she ate when she, where she had been, and what she ate when she was there. Okay, and then my next story that I have is, this is Simon, this is Easter weekend, and Simon is going, is painting eggs with his grandmother. Are you ready to paint your eggs, Simon? Grandma asked him after lunch. We can sit by the fire. She enjoyed coming down to the country, but she always did like being warm and comfortable. So did Simon, so he quickly agreed. He enjoyed having Grandma to himself, too. Sometimes she told him stories about his mother and aunt when they were little, or tales about exotic places she had been, like Jaipur, Mumbai, and Paris. He helped his mother to set up paints and dyes in front of the fire in the coziest room of the house, looking forward to it all. Are we going to blow the eggs, Grandma? Yes, she said. I'll make the holes and you blow the yolks and the whites out into the bowl. Your mother said she'd make scrambled eggs for supper. Simon cheerfully put the basket of eggs he'd sorted for painting onto the table and watched Grandma poke a small hole in one end and a larger hole at the other. It was always thrilling to watch, as sometimes the hole was too big, and the egg or the eggshell collapsed into itself, leaving Grandma with a handful of wet egg. They would both laugh. If everything was right, Simon was able to empty out the egg. He was proud of how carefully he could do this. He put his mouth on the smaller hole and blew as hard as he could. When he felt as if his breath was trying to go backwards in his mouth, there would be a sudden shift. The membrane covering the larger hole would give way. The white and the yolk would slither faster and faster into the waiting bowl. Grandma rinsed out each fragile shell in a bowl of clean water and dried it with a soft tea towel. Each year that he could remember, he and Grandma would paint the empty eggshells with flowers and elaborate patterns. The painted shells would be put into egg cups and displayed on the fireplace for months until a careless hand brushed past them and the shells broke and had to be tossed into the fire. That was disappointing, but as Grandma said, we can always make new decorations. So that's their Easter ritual. Yeah, I'm going to pick the first one. Okay. Like the, there's a... A mysterious magical quality to it. Really? Even us, I for me, I heard of like an almost a slightly ominous flavor at the end there. Was that intended? It is. It is intended. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that. So let's do. Is there anything else about that story that you want to share? No. So one of the things about the story is Simon will have magic. His family has magic. 
uh, his grandmother and his mother and his sisters all have magic of their own. Just a little bit. They, their, their ancestor is a, a warm water fae. So their magic is all about warm water. So keeping liquid things warm. Sometimes it's just the cof cup of coffee stays hot all day. Uh, it may. NLA. I actually need that because I started reading the book the other day. Great. I'm glad you did. I was up to you. Anything else about that? Oh, no, no. Yes. But yeah, some of it, he's, he's, he, will, he will have magic. He doesn't quite have magic in this book, but he knows it's coming. He'll be a, bit, a little bit older when it happens. Okay. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with that then. All right. Lovely.
Thank you, Craig. That was lovely. Oh, good. Good. So, any thoughts about that in relation to the story? Well, yeah, it was it was lovely. I, I kept thinking, oh, this would make it if I could. I'd love to to see if we could have some music and part of the audible book would be nice. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I always like that when they do that. I I I listen to a lot of audible books, and I appreciate the ones that have put some music in at the least at the beginning, you know, before the story mm -hmm. starts. It's a, it's a nice touch. Create some mood in the atmosphere. And then you can get into the mood of the rest of the book, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's the news on your writing? What's in the offings? Then tell us well, about your uh, books so people can look for them and Thank you. So si the, the series is Simon Spring, and he, at the moment we have, there are three books that are, are about ready to go. Book one is, has been published. It's available on Kindle as a paperback or as a Kindle book on Amazon. And then we also have book two is currently being edited by my editor, and the cover is being done by my illustrator, who has getting very excited by it. It's, it's this second book is all about Mount Rainier, the mountain here. So uh -huh. we have somebody, we have somebody who she knows in California, who's, who is coming up to Mount Rainier, who is going to take pictures for her this weekend. Oh, nice. So that's a nice combination of, of, you know, having people volunteer to help us with the illustration. And once the, that one is done, um, that, that should be coming out fairly soon. And then there'll be book three, which also takes place in Seattle. It, it starts in Seattle, but it also is a, a point where Simon ends up becoming a part of the larger world of the Fae, of the fairies that he had not known about. So that's going to be another another big excerpt. He, he'll start meeting all these other people who are like him, who are partial Fae, who have magic, and who all have different kinds of magic. And Wonderful. they are going to be involved in trying to save the ocean. Ask. Anything else you want to share? So those are those, are those three books. And we may, yeah, there may be some other children's books coming out next year. I have another series. It's a sort of a fairy tale series that will also, that are also three books and those will come out. And I am also doing those. So those are the ones that MLA writes. It's, it's books about magic and um, kids having fun in the world. The, Beautiful. That, and they remind me of a lot of the books that I read as a child. So things like C.S. Lewis, books like Edward Eager, E. Nesbitt had a lot of books that were very similar about people living in an ordinary world with magic. Mm -hmm. They discover what magic can do for them. Well, I've always and still do love fantasy, and uh, I like science fiction too. But uh, there's something about the worlds that created that get created in fantasy that I just love. So thank you for being someone who does that for people. You're welcome. No. So I'll put link any links that you want to give me in the show notes so that people I can follow up. And um, I think that's it. Anything mm -hmm. else for you? Yes. And if they want to, there are a couple of stories that you can get for free that are listed that are linked to in the website and that you can download them. Um, they are from Book Funnel. And, uh, you know, once you set, you know, that's something that people can get a, just a quick glimpse at. And the other thing on the website is that I do try and do little, very short stories that you can read about all the other characters in the books. Oh, nice. So, yeah. so see, see what other people are up to while Simon's busy working with his magic. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I look forward to reading your the rest of your book. Get beyond, get beyond the, the, the egg. I think it'll be good. Yes, I just literally started it. Oh. 
knowing that you were coming on, it inspired me to, I had just finished my last audio book. I thought, oh, it's time to read a real book. It's been a while. We're called paper, hi there. And I have, I, I must admit, I do, I prefer a Kindle because it means I have books with me all the time. Yes. My books are yes. all, you know, ready, go ahead, ready to go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. But thank you so much. It's good to talk to you. Thank you so much, yeah. Craig. It was really nice, really happy to be here. I hope you found today's episode of Stories from Under the Piano inspiring. For those seeking ongoing comfort and relaxation, join my Lullabies Under the Piano membership. Enjoy exclusive access to my new Lullabies Under the Piano album with streaming and download options available. Visit craigaddy.com to learn more and become a member today.